Hello everybody and welcome to my 26th Virtual Basic in Excel tutorial and um, this tutorial is going to go um, into the split function um, which is a function that uses uh, an array that we uh, looked at in the last tutorial so what does uh, the split function do? Well first of all what I'm going to do is uh, hello my name is Matt. Right, so at the moment we've got five different cells, um, each with a different string in them. Um, and what we want to do, first of all, is combine the, all of those into one um, string. So I'm going to create a function. So let's make it a private function. So I need this uh, module can use it function and we want to buy val um, the uh, row that is in we also uh, and we want to do that as an integer and buy val start column as integer and buy val and column as integer and we need to give the function a name say uh, concatenate and I'm not sure if that's how you spell concatenate but it will do for now um, and we want to do this as string so we want this function to return one string so uh, what we're we going to pass in this, we want to pass in a row and a start column and an end column um, and we we want it, so in this example we're going to pass it row number 1, start column 1, end column 5 and it's going to go across that row and it's going to add all of these into one string. So first of all, uh, let's put um, the end part equals the string and then we need to declare the string so dim uh, string and let's set the string equal to this workbook dot sheets and uh, in fact I'm not actually going to do that I'm going to have another by value in here by val ws as worksheet. Right. So this is going to pass in a worksheet object um, as its argument. So when we have um, the string equals, and then we can go reference straight to that worksheet dot cells, and we want the row it's in. So row and the start column so st column uh, dot of value so, and then we want a for loop to cover the rest so for uh, um, we'll have x equals st col we've already covered the first start column so we want plus one to end col and then we want to make the string equal to the string concatenated with and I'm going to put um, one of these squiggly lines followed by a slash followed by another squiggly line and you see the reason for this in a second and then we want to add the value of that cell so ws dot cells row comma and then we want to use x dot value right so this function takes uh, and I'm going to write this down so keeping to good standards here so this function takes a set of cells and 
combines them into one string. And I'm going to, instead of having set, I'm going to have row. And say so it takes the worksheet object that the row is on. It takes the row it is on as an integer. It takes the start and end columns as integers. Right. So anyone who is thinking of using this column will know exactly what it does and exactly what they need to pass in. Um, and also you know for yourself when you go back to it. So let's just go down here and let's start writing our actual sub. So sub com, uh, print text and um, all we want to do here is uh, make a string. So let's have a new string. So a new string equals, and then we set it equal to this function. So um, concatenate, and then we've got a worksheet. So first of all, before we do this bit, um, we need to declare the worksheet. So um, dim uh, sheets as worksheet, and then if you remember from one of the early tutorials, you have set sheet equal to this workbook dot sheets, and then sheet one. I remember to use set when you're setting uh, and worksheet or a workbook yeah, equal to as if you leave out the set then it doesn't work so now we can pass in sheet into here and then the row we want row one and then uh, the start column which again is one and the end column which is five all right and so this is going to give us a string that has all of their different rows together separated by this little squiggle here and what do we want to do then well I just want to write it out onto the workbook so let's go for sheet dot cells two comma one dot value equals a new string and you could skip out having the actual variable and just make um, equal to that but I want the variable here so let's run this so play and if we go into here then you'll see that this string has hello my name is Matt and then each separate part is separated by this little squiggly line um, and this is where the split function comes in because what the split function does is it searches for a certain string within a string and every time it finds it it splits that up so I'm going to show you that now um, and if we have uh, if we have um, a bit down here we're going to make a new array. So first of all, we're going to declare the array. Um, so we want um, split string array. And we want to make that equal to split. And then it takes the string. So this is why I wanted the strings of variables. So a new string and the delimiter we have as the what we had before, so little squiggly line slash little squiggly line. Um, and if you don't know where that little squiggly line is on my keyboard, it's just above the shift uh, by holding down shift. Um, you don't have to use little squiggly line, you can use semicolon, you can use well, you can use any string you want. Um, and then close bracket. And then, so now we've got split string array is an array so 
if we put um, let's put a message box here and let's just have it say nothing um, just because I want to be able to stop the hit this here so if we play this now and we go to view and locals window then you'll be able to see that the value of a new string assigned to new string is that and then we've got split string array and it's got five different elements zero based again so zero one two three four and then it's split it and taken out the little squiggly lines say hello my name is Matt so we can then reference these as we please so if I stop this from running um, and then I'm gonna have a for loop that will go through all of these so for I equals zero two and then I'm gonna have u bound and then split string array. Right, and you might be asking what U bound does. What U bound does is it counts how many elements there are in this array. Um, so this is going to count five, but um, we do not want to go to five, we want to go to four. So we want minus one. And this is a for loop that will let you go through an entire array just by putting i equals to zero and uh, put u bound at minus one and then this will go through every element in array and you can do with it what you want what we want to do is make the sheet dot cells and we want the row to be free and the column index to be i plus one and dot value and we want to set that equal to split string array and then reference each one in turn so if we play this now and we go on to here and we've missed one out and that is probably because of the minus one let's see what happens if we play this again and this is me going on to different um, codes so normally they give the um, things in other codes when you count how many elements there are it actually counts but you bound first time I've used it so uh, please forgive me for that <laughs> but you bound actually goes to the last element in the array so this is chosen to go to four um, rather than to go to five so you don't even need the minus one it's as simple as that for i to u bound and then the name of the array and that will go through all of the elements in the array for you and you can see here that first of all we've got our five different cells then it's been concatenated into one string and then we have five separate cells again now uh, at first glance this might not seem that useful but um, you, you probably come into a situation where this is handy and it's normally when you've got a lot of lots of data and you want to shrink it down and keep it in one string and then you can pass it to somewhere else um, it's quite useful for storage and things like that it just uh, saves a bit of room and then you can take it back out of that format and put it into this format um, Okay, so that is the end of this tutorial. Um, the last tutorials are covering things that I think are a little bit more uh, like harder to understand. So um, if you don't understand them, I completely uh, get that. And I suggest you just go back over them a couple of times and get a little bit of practice in because these are quite complicated uh, things, especially grasping how to use functions. That's something you want to practice a lot. So thanks for listening, uh, if you want to catch up to my future tutorials then please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.